Hey, thanks for making it to Veterans Info Tap. Today, I just wanted to go over a few things with VA.gov and eBenefits. Uh, originally, for those that have been logging on to these types of websites and, and looking at your information uh, online through them, uh, know that eBenefits was the kind of go-to spot, um, and then the VA has kind of abandoned that over the last few years and slowly migrating uh, all of that information into the VA.gov website, uh, of which uh, you use the same username and password. But for those of you that have not used VA.gov or eBenefits, uh, highly suggest getting a username and password uh, for those uh, websites because uh, right now there's still some information uh, in that legacy eBenefits um, website. So one of the things that you can do uh, if you go to VA.gov is you can select under... Uh, records, you can download your benefits letters. Now, these benefits lever letters are going to range, right? There's going to be a benefits letter to show that you can go use the commissary as a disabled veteran. Uh, there'll be a letter for uh, civil service uh, jobs. So if you're applying to, say, a federal job, uh, you can print that letter for your veteran preference points. Um, your basic award letter showing your monthly amount or a more detailed one that shows your monthly amount, what branch you served in, uh, what your disability rating is, and so forth. Now, one of the important things right now in this time of uh, year is to make sure that your um, amount of compensation is reflecting the correct amount because the COLA increase, right? So COLA uh, is effective December 1st of every year, uh, is when that goes into effect. So every year when you print out your award letter, it's going to have a December 1st of whatever year um, showing that uh, that is the effective date. It's not the effective date of your disabilities. It's the effective date of the adjustment in pay compensation for your, uh, for your disabilities. So when you sign in, you'll basically have four options to sign in. You can either uh, sign in under the login.gov or IDME or a DS logon, which is uh, using your CAC card if you have a common access card, if you're a reservist um, or a federal contractor uh, within the, the armed services, you would have a CAC card. Uh, or My Healthy Vet is also an option. Uh, then what will happen is, is you would go into uh, your VA um benefits letters section and there you'll be able to select view letters and then you would be able to select in this case we'll say the benefits summary um, letter which would then summarize all of your you know time and service your or not time and service what branch you served in what uh, what your disability rating is and most importantly right now what your compensation amount is with the effective date being December 1st uh, for this video, December 1st of 2022, effective date, uh, and your appropriate compensation amount. If your compensation amount does not reflect the change or the date is not reflected correctly, I suggest call the VA and just make sure that they're on the right page. Chances are everything's already set into place and you will get your correct amount. They just did not update the letter for some reason uh, for you. But it's really important that you have that letter updated for anything that you need to qualify for, um, you know, financially. So if you're buying a car, uh, you're buying a house, things like that, you're applying for a loan, those types of things, you're going to disclose income and your income needs to be, you know, appropriate. And if you're in the higher ranges, you know, 70, 80, 90%, 100% rating with the VA, uh, the raise is somewhat substantial. And uh, also important to remember that this is tax-free money, so when you use it to qualify for something, the lender will uh, do something called grossing it up. So $1,000 is not $1,000 because it's tax-free, so they're usually looking at gross. So they'll have to manufacture a gross figure for you. So $1,000 of tax-free benefit uh, for compensation, disability compensation, would then equate to, say, twelve fifty dollars of a grossable uh, amount so they could use that for qualifying purposes. Uh, additionally, if you go back into your e-benefits account, which is the um, kind of the legacy VA portal for veterans, uh, you can pull up uh, old records, um, old claims, old information that you've sent through your documents, 
uh, there, which is which is interesting. Uh, and then you can also pull up a list of all of your currently awarded and not approved all of the disabilities you've ever filed for with the VA, and it'll say you know either not service connected or service connected. And then for your service connected, you may see a little kind of down angled arrow, right? A little right degree um, angled arrow uh, with another condition next to it. That indicates secondaries. So you may have a condition and then you may have little arrows underneath it with other conditions. Those are secondary conditions. So one of the things that, that I encourage people to do is really in your non-service connected conditions, meaning you filed for those, you filed for some conditions and you were denied, is a lot of times what I see is that people will file things hoping the VA will uncover um, the nexus, the link between that condition and their time and service. And the VA is not gonna do anything for you. You have to provide all of that information. So as you look through all of your past um, conditions that you applied for compensation uh, but were denied, denied service connection, is think about those. You know, okay, if I had that condition during my time in service, how can I, I need to make sure that I have these things in place. One, did that condition manifest during my time in service? Yes or no? Okay, we'll say yes. Now, do I have a diagnosis for that condition? The diagnosis doesn't necessarily need to have happened during your time of service, although that's ideal, but it may have happened after and that's okay. But do you have a diagnosis somewhere at some time frame for that condition? Remember, the VA is not going to diagnose you to get you that service connection. You need to do that up front. So do you have a diagnosis? Let's say yes. So now you have a non-service connected condition that you know manifested during your time in service and you have a diagnosis for that condition, either in or out of service. Okay, now you have those two things. The third thing is the nexus, the link between that condition and your time in service. Remember that it's not that the military caused it, it's that it manifested during your time in service. So for the example of I have uh, a condition that I know started during service. My diagnosis happened after service. For that situation, I now need to somehow prove that this condition manifested during my time in service. I know it in my mind, but how can I prove it? And this is where maybe um, it might be something that you could self-manage like GERD or migraine headaches or sinusitis, those types of things. So if it was something that you could manage on your own, then you're going to have to write letters explaining that and that you bought over-the-counter stuff and you got maybe over-the-counter type medication from the medic or corpsman, uh, of which they're not writing it down. They're not annotating that. Um, if you know anybody that served with you during that time, getting what we call buddy statements, um, basically saying, yes, I know so-and-so and I served with them wherever and I knew that they had this chronic sinusitis or this you know horrific heartburn or terrible migraines whatever it is and having them write letters attesting to uh, their knowledge of you having these conditions then uh, if you were married during the time um, or you had uh, children that maybe remember uh, uh, how you were suffering from these different uh, ailments, having them write letters, anybody that knew you during that time frame of service to put it in there so that way you now have a nexus, right? It's lay evidence, it's uh, better than nothing, um, and it is weighted, so uh, having it uh, is a good thing and it's evidence in your favor. Now, filing the claim, you can refile for you know, those claims that you were denied for, uh, because obviously you filed for them because you felt like you may have had some sort of a possibility of winning it, uh, but maybe you were missing a piece. So now you're refiling for it. Let's say it gets denied again. You want to make sure that you follow up with an appeal because that appeal, um, if it makes it, if you go, let's say to the track of the uh, Veterans Board of Appeals and it's seen by a veterans law judge, that veterans law judge looks at things through the legal lens purely and is going to give weight to your lay evidence. 
the threshold with the VA is at least likely as not. So in other words, if the evidence is for you and against you equal, the VA is supposed to rule in your favor. And oftentimes the judges get it right. So if you have to push it that far, that's what you have to do. So with that, uh, good information, va.gov and e-benefits. Make sure your letters are good to go. And thanks again. If we don't take care of each other, something went wrong.